Hi, welcome back. What I want to do in this video is explore the first two enzymes in beta oxidation. And I'm assuming that you've already watched the video on fatty acyl CoA uh, synthetase, which remember you can also call uh, fatty acid CoA ligase. It's a ligase, right? And I think what you'll find is that for saturated fatty acids especially, this process is very mechanical, right? This process is very mechanical, okay? And I've gone ahead and drawn a generic fatty acid over here that's ligated to the CoA, right? And so essentially what I have here is I've labeled the carbons, okay? And what I want to do is really get some nomenclature down. This right here, right here, this is what we call the carboxylic acid derivative. And there are a lot of carboxylic acid derivatives. You have aldehydes, you have alcohols, you have um, you know, esters, you have amides, all these things, and nitriles. Of course, you don't see those too much in biochemistry, but they're all carboxylic acid derivatives. And from a nomenclature standpoint, the alpha carbon is typically labeled as the carbon adjacent to the carboxylic acid derivative. And in this case, the carboxylic acid derivative is a thioester. And so in coenzyme A bonds, the, the carbon, car carboxylic acid derivative is a thioester bond. Okay, and those are typically fairly high energy, and usually what they're doing is they're activating the molecule that it's bound to in the thioester bond. And we can go past the alpha carbon, we can go to the beta carbon, we can go to the gamma, the delta, epsilon, but the really important thing we're worried about is the beta carbon. And this is the carbon that gets oxidized. And as we'll oxidize, and as we'll see, um, this is where the term beta oxidation comes from because ultimately this is the carbon that continues to get oxidized more and more. It's first going to get oxidized into an alkene, then into an alcohol, and then finally into a ketone. Okay, And that's what we're going to see. Okay, Now the very first enzyme in beta oxidation is catalyzed by an enzyme called fatty acyl-S-CoA dehydrogenase. And what I've done for you already is I've gone ahead and draw well I didn't draw it but I got it from Wikipedia and this is the functional component of FAD and so what I want to do also is and actually you, you probably already know this but this is an FAD dependent enzyme and out of it we're going to get an FADH2 right and we'll see in later videos when we do the respiratory chain that FADH2 in this case is going to enter the respiratory chain at an enzyme called electron transferring flavoprotein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. That's beside the point for now, but just understand that the FADH2 is ultimately going to contribute to the proton pumping, um, or not, well, not the proton pumping, but the ubiquinone pool at the respiratory chain. And essentially, the um, the version of FADH2 that we're going to get is going to look something like this. And actually just an interesting note while I'm drawing this. Um, FAD actually is a molecule that comes from GTP. Um, just an interesting note, there's an enzyme called GTP cyclohydrolase that initiates the cascade, but ultimately it comes from um, it comes from from GTP. Okay, by the way, this isn't, actually, let me, let me make that clear. I don't want to just scratch it out. Sorry about this. There we go. This is supposed to be an R group. Okay. And so this is the functional part of the FADH2 that we get. And so this is FADH2. And like I mentioned, it's going to go into the respiratory chain and contribute to the ubiquinone pool. It's going to, and ultimately ubiquinone is going to be re, uh, uh, reduced to ubiquinol. And, the, and, and FADH2 is going to enter at electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase, which produces ubiquinol. Okay, so what have we done? We've created... Um, an alkene version 
of the fatty acyl CoA, and we have a special name for this. We call it an enoyl CoA, an enoyl S CoA, and the en just comes from the fact that it is an alkene. So we call this an enoyl CoA. And you may say, well, what's the driving force for this reaction? Well, there actually is a driving force that you should know about for um, for for the sake of organic chemistry, and especially if you're taking something like the MCAT, something like this can crop up. If you look at these double bonds, you notice that they're a conjugated pi system. They're a conjugated pi system. So recall that conjugated pi systems are a stabilizing effect, right? So part of the driving force for the reaction, other than the fact that FAD is a good oxidizing agent, is that when you put the double bond in there, you're generating a conjugated pi system, right? And so that's essentially what the enzyme is doing. It's just making an alkene. Well, the reason we make an alkene there is that we're going to do something that you've seen from organic. We're going to do an addition reaction to an alkene. And mechanistically, I'm not going to do the mechanism here, but mechanistically, it's exactly the same as what you would see. If, uh, I mean, you've seen it, a hydration of an alkene. Mechanistically, it's exactly the same. And this is catalyzed by an enzyme called, and let me do this in a blue color, enoyl CoA hydratase. And this is the first time we're, well, that we, at least um, the, way, the way we name it, this is the first hydratase that we've encountered. There are other hydratases. Um, fumarase is actually a fumarate hydratase. Aconitase is an aconitate hydratase, although we don't usually name them that way. But in terms of naming it, this is the first hydratase that we've encountered. And hydratases have... Um, a, a, a defining feature and what they do is they're usually adding water across a double bond okay and so what's going to happen ultimately is we're going to add water across this double bond and so what we're going to get is we're going to still have the CoA obviously and we're going to have this and this is beta when we call this is we call this beta hydroxy acyl s coa right so now we have um, a hydroxyl group beta to the carbonyl or beta to the thioester and what we've done and notice what we've done we're oxidizing that beta carbon more and more so if i go back and label right this is the beta carbon this is the beta carbon let me go ahead and circle it just so we're clear as to what we're talking about that's the beta carbon. And notice, we first take it up to an alkene. That's more oxidized than an alkane. Then we take it up to a hydroxyl group. We oxidize it even more. And as we're going to see in what, what, what will begin the next video, um, we're going to oxidize it up to a ketone. And then we're going to thiolize it off. And it's actually going to be the first thiolysis that we're going to see in Biochem 1. Um, and as 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 you as you, you and you may already you may already be able to guess where we're going with this, but because we already have a CoA on there, and I mentioned we're going to thiolize this molecule, so you may already be able to guess where we're headed with this. Um, but I just want to get these first two reactions under our belt. So just to regroup, we start with a a uh, an acyl CoA, and actually let me be perfectly clear on this. Um, something that um, we should we should know. And I'll go ahead and do this in a yellow, uh, green color. If you notice, I'm going to circle these two hydrogens, right? These two hydrogens appear in the FADH2. Those hydrogens are this one right here and this one right here. So if you notice, if you look, I'll box it here, they don't have these hydrogens here. So those the, the, the protons that come with the electrons ultimately end up on the FADH2 molecule as well. So one thing that's important to understand that I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but whenever you um, add electrons, a lot of times also what you're doing is you're adding protons as well. And this is this is no exception to that. So um, yeah, we, 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 we oxidize with fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase up to an enoyl CoA, and then we hydrate it. And in fact, the hydration of it is mechanistically identical to the mechanism of fumarase. So if you go back and you look at fumarase or fumarate hydratase, uh, the mechanism is exactly the same. And in fact, if you look at aconitate hydratase, 
the last half of that mechanism is also exactly the same. So hydrotases have a very um, common mechanism of action. I hope this video helped. See you in the next video.